In this video, I'm stepping outside my comfort zone and I'm tackling New Hampshire's highest peak, Mount Washington, all by myself in the winter. This day was definitely a roller coaster of emotions, so I'm excited to bring you along. Good morning from the Emmanusik Ravine Trail, going up Mount Washington, doing a little solo hike today in the winter. I feel super excited and super prepared. I took all the mistakes I made from my last 4,000 footer attempt in the winter, which I vlogged. And so I have my snowshoes, I have lots of water, lots of food. I got out on the trail nice and early and I'm pretty pumped for the day. Excited to take you along. I have been looking at the weather for this hike all week and it just looked like a perfect time to do it. Honestly, it is kind of misting a little bit right now, but not enough to really put my rain gear on yet. But the highs are like in the 20s or 30s, and I feel like that's warm for a winter on Mount Washington. So, should be a good day. We'll see if we get any views. Driving up here, there were definitely a lot of little sections with really nice blue skies, but you know, Mount Washington is so unpredictable. So, we'll see. Anyways, it's going to be a nice, long, fun day in the White Mountains. Hopefully not post-holing. Like I said, I have the snowshoes if the post-holing gets worse, but as long as I stay in the very middle of the trail, it's very packed down. I did have my Dunks refresher and breakfast sandwich on the ride up here, but it's time for snack number one. So good. You can never tell on camera, but this is definitely the steepest hike I've done in a while. And a lot of my steps are just following the step poles of people in front of me. Poles are also helping a lot too. So hard to vlog. <laughs> I tried setting my phone up on the side of the trail so I could show you how steep it was. And then my phone proceeded to slide down a good chunk of the really steep trail I was trying to show you. Life of a vlogger. So after about two hours of hiking through this really misty and foggy weather, I finally hiked past the Alpine zone. And when I looked to my left, I got the most incredible view of Mount Washington with a blue sky behind it. And that really took me by surprise because I still thought that we were totally socked in. But the sun decided to come out. I just knew deep in my heart that this was going to be a good day to hike Mount Washington. And I was just so relieved that Mount Washington was greeting me with these amazing views. So I knew that hiking Mount Washington in the winter by myself was a huge undertaking. So I did a lot to prepare for this hike so it would be as fun, successful, and most of all as safe as possible. So I did a lot of things. I checked the weather forecast a dozen times. I triple checked my gear so I made sure I had everything. I got a good night's sleep the night before. but. I think the easiest thing I did to prep for this hike is that I made sure that I went into the day being hydrated. And that's where Element comes in. I drank a whole bottle of Element the day before my hike and also while I was hiking. So I was for sure hydrated <laughs> because if I don't do that, sometimes I get headaches and I just don't have the energy and I don't feel well. So I personally use Element to keep me hydrated on the trail. Sometimes it's just not as easy to drink a lot, especially in the winter. And it's just as important because as I'm hiking up the mountain with my heavy backpack, I could physically feel the sweat on my back and feel the sodium that I was losing. So Element has a thousand milligrams of sodium as well as it has potassium and magnesium, which is just a science-backed formula to keep you hydrated. And as I'm hiking up the mountain, I was actually so looking forward to my first snack and water break at the Lake of the Clouds hut because I knew I had one of these waiting for me. 
I had the citrus salt flavor, which is just so good and so refreshing. And if you want to try all of Element's flavors, you can use my link, which is drinkelement.com slash New Hampshire, because when you use that, you get a free sample pack with any order that includes eight of their flavors. So again, drinklmnt.com slash New Hampshire. If you want to try Element, if you want to reorder Element, if you want to stay hydrated on the trails, I definitely recommend it. I'm just leaving the Lake of the Clouds hut now after a nice long lunch and break. And do you hear that? There's absolutely no wind. I feel like that never happens up here. Uh, I did get a good view of Mount Washington the entire time I was taking that break, but it just got back in the clouds. So maybe I'll pop back out when I get up there. We'll see. If it doesn't, I still got amazing views of it, pictures, videos, and it was really nice, really beautiful. I can see the summit again. <laughs> I can't get over how surreal this feels right now, hiking up here. It doesn't even look like New Hampshire. I'm like transported to a whole other world right now. I didn't spend too long at the summit, so I'm already on my way back down. I'm going down the same route that I hiked up, just because it made me feel a little more comfortable. I know exactly what to expect. I made it up in under four hours, and I'm thinking maybe I can make it down in three. Um, nice solid day of hiking, but I'll try to get below tree line and update you again, because it's still windy up here. <laughs> It is 2.42 right now, and I am back mostly in the trees. No more wind. Took another break at the Lake of the Clouds hut. And if you remember me talking about how steep it was coming up this trail, I am now managing hiking down it, which is very slippery, very slushy. So I'm paying attention, stepping in um, footsteps of people ahead of me and taking it slow. But it's... I mean, 2.42 p.m. I feel like it's still pretty early in the day. I'm less than two miles from the parking lot, so I feel like I'm making really good time. I've done 5.88 miles. <laughs> I forgot to mention a really cool thing that happened literally the second that I started my hike this morning. So I step foot on trail and I see a group of three by the trailhead and one of them looked up at me and said, Taylor? And I look back and I'm like, yeah? It was the host of Sounds Like a Search and Rescue podcast, which I've listened to occasionally, especially on my through hike and a couple long drives up to the White Mountains. It's a hiking, backpacking podcast based in New Hampshire. And so it's really interesting to me. And yeah, it was really cool meeting him. 
I thought I was going to leapfrog with them a few times and talk a little bit more, but once they started hiking, I never caught back up. So that'd be cool. Hopefully I see them again and maybe even be a guest on the podcast one of these days. <laughs> So I'm back home. It's been a couple days since this hike, but I still feel like I had a lot to say that I didn't really mention while I was up on the mountain vlogging this hike. So I have a, di a couple different points I want to get to real quick. First is just the stats of this hike. So it was 7.66 miles. It took me six and a half hours, and that includes about 45 minutes of break time at the hut and it totaled around 3,700 feet of elevation gain. I parked at the Cog Railway. I went up the Amanusik Ravine Trail to the Lake of the Clouds hut, and then took Crawford Path to the summit of Mount Washington, which is actually also the Appalachian Trail. It did feel really cool being on the Appalachian Trail again, even if it was only for a couple miles. So going into this hike, I knew exactly what trail I wanted to take to the summit of Mount Washington, but for some reason, I didn't give much thought into what trail I was going to take from the summit back to my car because I met a few hikers at the trailhead and they were talking about their plans and they asked about mine and I kind of froze. I was like, oh, I'm taking this trail up to the summit and I guess I'm coming back down the same way just because I for some reason just didn't think about it. And I honestly had no idea what trail I was going to take back down until I was literally standing on the summit and I was looking at two different trails and I was like, I don't know what way to walk. But because I was doing this hike by myself, I wanted to do what made me feel the most safe. And that was just going back down the same way I hiked up because I knew exactly what to expect and I knew what the conditions were like. I'm sure it would have been shorter if I went down the Cog Railway. I've done that before in the winter with a friend, but for some reason it just made me nervous not knowing exactly what to expect on that trail down. So another challenge I faced on this hike was this little traverse across the mountain section after I passed the hut. And I don't have any experience on the PCT or in the Sierras, but this is what I picture that section of trail being like, because I don't know, one wrong step or one slip, and I picture myself just sliding down the mountain. Um, it wasn't that intense, but it felt like a section of trail that you would use an ice axe for, and I don't own one. Um, I don't know how to use one. Going up Mount Washington on this section, it was a little sketchy, but I felt safe. Coming back down, it definitely made me a little more nervous because I didn't feel as stable. The weather had gotten a lot worse and there were less people on the trail at this time, but there were three people right behind me while I was doing this. So that made me feel a little bit better <laughs> that I wasn't completely by myself and they were all behind me laughing, having a good time. So that kind of just lightened my mood a little bit, but I would say that was the scariest part of my hike. But again, I just, I never really felt in danger. It was just, I don't know, not a great section of trail. And then when it comes to the conditions of this day in general, it was warm, so the trail itself was just very slushy and wet. I had on my Catula micro spikes the entire time, but I feel like the ground wasn't hard enough for the spikes to actually have anything to dig into, but I still felt like I needed them. <laughs> so I don't know, I was slipping around, I was walking in slush, and the trail was all right. I feel like I might have been more stable on my feet if the trail was just a little more firm, but it was just typical like warm spring snow conditions up there. Now when it came to the weather in general, it definitely felt warm for a winter hike, especially in the presidential range. I still think it was around the 20s and 30s the entire time. About a thousand feet below the summit, that's when the wind picked up. It was a little bit bad in spots. It was not like super strong, but it was strong enough for me not to really be able to vlog and talk to the camera that much. There were times where I couldn't see the summit. There were times where the sky was completely blue. There were times where I felt like I was above the clouds and everything below me was socked in, but everything above me was just perfect blue skies. So it was kind of cool having just that change of scenery the entire hike. And the last thing I kind of want to reflect on from this day is that I feel like this hike 
for me was the perfect amount of challenge and risk. Now I'm not super experienced when it comes to hiking the higher peaks in New Hampshire in the winter, but I still get out there and I still try and I still try to really learn from all of my experiences to get better at it. Something I really pride myself in when it comes to hiking is knowing when things become unsafe and knowing when I should just change my plans, bail on the hike and turn around and just go back to my car. That happens a lot for me and I'm proud of like my decision making up there and I feel like that really plays a role into my family being supportive for all of these solo hikes that I do because I've met people that have told me that their family would never let them hike by themselves and it just makes me feel really thankful for my situation and that I have a husband and parents and my family and friends just just like being supportive of me and being on board with this hobby I have. So hiking is supposed to be fun and I just never want to put myself at risk and put myself into dangerous situations. But I still want to get out there and challenge myself and have these cool hikes. So I feel like this Mount Washington hike was the perfect amount of risk and challenge for me. So I could still like slightly get outside my comfort zone, but I didn't really feel unsafe doing it. And I was just really proud of all my decision making and my gear and everything. It was just like the sweet spot. And I wasn't planning on this, but I think I actually will put out a gear list video next of everything I had with me on this hike, everything in my backpack, all my safety gear, all my layers, everything that just made this hike so successful for me. So stay tuned for that. This is my Mount Washington solo winter hiking vlog. Hope you enjoyed because this has been one of my favorite hikes that I've done in a while. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Callie, can you not play with your one and only squeaker toy while I do this?